Hello homeowners, my name is Zach Keller and I am a student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison studying civil engineering and today I'm here to talk to you about utilities and how a certain shape of home can help you reduce those utilities. I will outline the factors that come into play with the geodesic dome and I'll also outline solutions to more efficiently provide solutions for these heating concerns. Due to the fact that the average American home uses about half of its energy use on heating and cooling, I chose my topic on geodesic domes. Specifically for some of the advantages, radiant heat is trapped within the dome and natural light heats the dome more naturally rather than using temperature controlled devices. On top of that, circulation within a dome is more efficient and, and occurs naturally due to the natural heating rising and settling of temperature controlled air. For the third advantage, heat loss is minimized due to the materials and the structure of a dome being more airtight and aerodynamic compared to residential homes. For the disadvantages, smell is an issue. It circulates more easily around the structure and can be smelled from any other part of the, ho of the house. On top of that, placement is also an issue because it is more difficult to maximize the amount of space within the dome if a special contractor is not used. And finally, there's an une uneven distribution around the home due to the natural rising of heat. So as I will show later, there's about a four degree difference compared to the top to the, and the bottom of the dome. As shown in the graphic below reported by the EIA, in the pink section is heating for a regular house in Wisconsin, and the blue is the cooling. So as shown, around or above 50% of our electricity use goes towards heating and cooling a residential home. Now why is that? Specifically, heat loss occurs due to the windows and the materials that are used in a home. Additionally, with houses being less aerodynamic and having more wind force on the outside as compared to more curved structures. This also comes from circulation problems where vents need to be put in to bring heat and cooling around the house rather than a, more, a simpler system. For my first solution to this heating and cooling problem, I'm comparing a standard geodesic dome to a standard residential home, both with standard heating and cooling systems. Naturally, for a geodesic dome, there's about a 30% reduction in energy usage due to the factors I mentioned before and will mention again. This accounts to about an $8,400 cost for 10 years, which also can be low as 6,000 depending on how you design the home and certain other systems that are incorporated. On top of that, a geodesic dome is more flexible in the winter and summer. It can hold a lower temperature in the summer and a higher temperature in the winter to even further reduce heating costs. For a standard home, the temperature is much more controllable as seen with today's systems. This comes out to about $12,000 for 10 years which is quite expensive on top of other utilities. There are other costs that are increased for a standard home, considering the factors I mentioned before as materials that are more permeable, the aerodynamic concerns, and windows that allow cold in the winter and heat in the summer to more easily pass into the home. Due to the advantages and disadvantages of a geodesic dome, my two proposed solutions are a geodesic dome with standard HVAC heating and cooling and a geodesic dome with the renewable heating and cooling. For my second solution, I chose to compare a geodesic do dome using solar and a standard geodesic dome, both with standard heating and cooling systems. For both, it would be about $8,400 without reductions for those utilities. If you implemented a solar plan, 
it would be about $16,000 to pay for that system to reduce your utility price. For the average American home in Wisconsin, it would be about $2,200 per year that you get back off of your utilities. And if you do the math in your head, it's about eight years to pay off for that system. It's also important to take into account that a geodesic dome has different angles in order to maximize the solar energy for those solar panels. For the other dome, it would also be $8,400 for a standard geodesic dome and its utilities for heating and cooling. And that's over a 10 year period. Also must be taken into account that geodesic dome requires less space for these heating and cooling systems. So although you lose some space due to it being a geodesic dome and having different angles, you also can gain back some space because the heating and cooling systems require less space. When comparing a geodesic dome to a res standard residential home, there are three big factors that must be taken into account. And these are simplicity, accessibility, and circulation. Within a geodesic dome, there is not as much need for a vent system. Thus, simplicity makes use of much less materials and more efficient heating and cooling throughout the dome. Additionally, it is much easier to access these systems for repairs and maintenance rather than standard homes where the vents are in the walls or the ceilings, so it's much more difficult to get into those systems if there is a problem. And finally, as I mentioned before, Geodesic domes circulate the air much more efficiently. So for the most part, aside from radiant heat, the heating and cooling is much more distributed and doesn't need a vent system to perform that action. The reason I am also comparing a geodesic dome to a standard residential home are due to some of the safety factors, specifically its strong shell. Geodesic domes have a high strength to weight ratio, so they are much more robust for the amount of materials and space that they take up. On top of that, due to be it being a sphere, they are much more aerodynamic than modern, many modern homes today, which reduces the amount of cooling that comes into the system and heating in the summer. It is also said that they are virtually indestructible. They have been known to survive floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, and even fires down south in the US and other places that they have been implemented. On top of that, they require fewer emissions. Specifically, if you're using a standard heating system, it requires much less energy to heat that system due to circulation. So you will therefore have fewer emissions to keep it at the same temperature. And on top of that, as those sort of go hand in hand, it doesn't require as much energy to continually heat that system if the heat is trapped inside rather than can it escape very easily. A major reason that I also picked geodesic domes as my topic is because of the global implications that it can have. Especially in the US and other countries, it could provide cheaper housing, especially when lot prices and housing prices are much higher than they used to be. Additionally among that, it could create more of an urban society where homes are more similar and not showing economic prosperity and the domes themselves are more equal to each other and fostering human equality. On top of that, utilities have tend to inflate it and the prices of such utilities, especially including heating, are much higher than they need to be and have been in the past. On top of that, it will increase the standards of life housing is cheaper, utilities, a minimum wage, or jobs that do not pay as much will be able to create a better standard of life for that person instead of most of their money going towards utilities and housing prices. Due to all these factors, I would highly recommend a solar geodesic dome if that is within your price range. If not, a regular geodesic dome also functions just as well, but just does not reduce your utilities and emissions just quite as much. It really comes down to three, four factors of materials, energy, footprint, and safety. A geodesic dome fuses fewer materials 
and saves a lot on the cost of building a home. On top of that, circulation of heat and such things as radiant heat also help circulation and reduce your energy consumption. Furthermore, these also factor into your emissions footprint. If you do not need as much energy to heat your home and it heats more efficiently, you can emit very, a lot less for a, a standard home that has just the same square footage any, as any other residential home. And finally, safety is a big factor, especially in areas where heat or cold are extreme, there are fires, tornadoes, or hurricanes. It's very much beneficial to have a geodesic dome that is not only cheaper than a residential home, but is much more structurally sound and will save you the hassle of going to buy a new home after disaster strikes. Due to a geodesic dome's many natural advantages, this is why I would like to finish with the saying, wherever you roam, you can come back to an efficient dome.